like a shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in holding them carefully close to his heart leading them home come unto me you are heavenly burden and pavement upon your his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms holding them carefully close to his heart leading them home leading In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this Independence Weekend, certainly we remember with the whole church and the whole United States the blessings that we have received, and often because of the sacrifices so many have made. We remember those who have given up their life for our freedom. And at the same time, we pray for our nation for continued healing and for our future. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Father of all nations and ages, we recall the day when our country claimed its place among the family of nations. For what has been achieved, we give you thanks. For the work that still remains, we ask your help. And as you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, grant that under your providence, our country may, re may share your blessings with all the peoples of the earth. O God, who in the abasement of your Son Jesus have raised up a fallen world then, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal on an ass. He shall manage, banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good to 
to all, and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord. Let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. 
All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I'll apologize to everybody, but I think there's some electrical interference. It's none of our microphones. When I went over there, I can see the whole system glitching. Sounds like thunder coming. <laughs> I don't know about you, but this 4th of July comes timely for us. I think as a nation, we have been weary and it's certainly wonderful to have such beautiful weather to be able to relax and to enjoy and to, to be families for many of us anyway. At the same time, to come to church and, and come to receive the Lord and hear this beautiful reading where Jesus says, come to me, those of you who are burdened and who labor, and I will give you rest. I think it's so important to know that even Jesus, you know, several times he took that time to go off to pray to the desert. He encouraged his disciples to follow him. It is a part of our life as Christians to be able to take a moment to pray, to rest. And this year, certainly, there have been plenty of other things we can take a break from as well. Not that they're not important but maybe to take a breath, maybe to say a prayer might be a wonderful thing. For me, as I prayed this morning, I thought, you know, out of all of the things that are going on, to spend time with the Lord, to pray for our country, to realize that the first people that we belong to is Jesus' people, and then to realize what he's saying today, to come and take rest, but also to take his yoke upon our shoulders. And Jesus' yoke is one of loving our neighbor, building a beautiful world, loving God. And for we Christians, at least, to kind of take a moment to, to settle back into who we are and how we are to witness to the world, it is a powerful thing indeed to think that we can lead right now with showing each other, starting with our families and our neighborhoods, starting with our job places, eventually our schools, but as Christians that we put Christ first by putting each other first. So as you come to church today, we have a very simple message to take some rest in Jesus. To kind of reconnect with who he is and his teaching. And to let that be our focus as we go back into our world. Not that I'm rushing your vacation. <laughs> but much rather, we know who we are and who we're called to be. And if we put that first, we ourselves will witness love and we will witness hard work and work that builds up. It will also seek justice because that is who we are. And it will seek peace. All wonderful things that um, our forefathers and mothers that gave their lives for, for this country, um, meant to pass on to us and met, uh, meant us to thrive in. So as I invited you at the beginning of Mass, we'll continue to pray for all of those things, 
but also to pray for that rest, that take a breath moment, and that it would be filled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself and Jesus' teachings that draw us into our future. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and... I'll start the right prayer now. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was in God and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church, for the church, that God will help us take up the yoke of Christ and follow him in speaking the truth lovingly, offering forgiveness to those who wrong us and praying for our enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, that God will give them wisdom in addressing current challenges, courage to work for the greater good, and openness to new approaches for the good of those whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from fear, that God will help us surrender our fear and anxiety into the hands of God who loves us and strengthen our confidence that he will provide for us in every circumstance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are traveling, that God will guide you safely to their destination and provide you from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to injustice and discrimination, that God will help everyone recognize the God-given dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your Son to a fallen world to teach and guide us and lead us. Help us by his teaching and his love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you, Lord God of all creation? For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work with human hands that will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through 
for your goodness we have received the wine you offer us, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice of humble and contrite hearts. Wash me in the blood for my iniquity. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, whose heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord. Profess, caress, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all our patron saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our administrator bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing you, to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom for there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death and resurrection brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching. For those receiving communion spiritually, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you in my soul. At this moment, I cannot receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Lord Jesus, never permit us to be separated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life with him. Communion Antiphon. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, even as we receive you now, may we gain the prize of salvation and never ever cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. 
It's not always that the 4th of July uh, lands on a Saturday evening or a Sunday, so there are prayers that are normally for our country on this day, and I've kind of added some of them in because they're so beautiful. Um, I'd like to pray one more. It would have been the prayer that we would pray on the 4th of July before the Holy Holy. We praise you, O God of creation, as the Father of Jesus, the Savior of the world, in whose image we seek to live. He loved the children of the lands he walked and enriched them with his witness of justice and truth. He lived and died that we might be born in the Spirit and filled with love for all people. And so with hearts full of love, we join angels and saints every day of our lives. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go forth praising God with our lives for the Mass.